Well, the fast is approaching, Veliki Post. So I want to talk tonight a little bit about how we should prepare and how we should actually keep the fast, which is very important, um, for, from a, a spiritual perspective. Um, what I have to say comes from the Holy Fathers. In fact, everything that I talk about is what I've read from saints, lives of saints, sayings of the Fathers, maybe some modern, but generally uh, I read only the patristic, in other words, of the Fathers, because um, I, I can't make up anything, I don't know anything. But, so I'm passing on what I learn to you, because that's, that's how it works. Obviously, I have an interpretation on it because it's the way I, I see it and the way I read it, of course. But anyway, it's important. Now, the fathers say that the, the early Israelites, once a year, they gave a tenth of their possessions to God. They call it a tithe in English. It means a tenth. A tenth of all their possessions once a year. The holy apostles um, improved on this. And what they did, they they set aside days in which we tithe ourselves through fasting. So this is where the fasting comes from. And I've got some statistics here, which I have to look at my paper. Um, so we tithe every day of our life. Um, the 365 days in a year. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. you, so sure, 365? Yes, okay. Uh, seven weeks, um, which are set aside for fasting. Okay, this is if you listen very carefully. And then, then the, the fathers decided to add. This is what the apostles decided. Right? Seven weeks of fasting, and then one week was added by the fathers as a form of training to get us ready for fasting. To prepare us to be able to fast. So we have a week of fasting before we start fasting. So it makes eight weeks. And of course, that's the eight weeks of the uh, Veliki Post. The great fast is eight weeks. Seven. We stop. We have Palm Sunday, entry into Jerusalem, and then we start Holy Week. Yeah, so that's another fast. Um, now, the eight weeks do not include Saturdays and Sundays. We do not fast on Saturday and Sunday. And some of you may say, well, we do, because we're not allowed to eat meat and cheese and things like that on Saturday and Sunday during Lent. But we're allowed to have wine and oil, so that is, you know, a luxury that we're, we're given. Depends on how you eat, I suppose, what you regard as um, being a luxury. But if you add those up, it, it equals 40 days. That's eight weeks without Saturdays and Sundays gives you 40 days. Now, 40 days is our Lord in the desert. The Pustinia went into the desert and fasted for 40 days and were tempted. So that's, that's that um, memory to that. With the exception, Holy Saturday is a fast because it's a very special day. And so that day is a fast. Otherwise, Saturdays are not fasting. Um, during the week, uh, we make pakloni, yeah, prostrations. But on the weekend we do not, because we're not fasting. So we don't do it. Okay. Now, there's two kinds of, um, well, let's think of the fasting. Of course, the first part of fasting is, of course, um, abstaining from food, not to eat certain foods. No eggs, no meat, no dairy. And so that is fasting, but um, it's bit deeper than that because we should avoid pleasure in eating. We should not take pleasure in eating during the fast. Everybody probably thinking now, you know, oh, what am I going to cook and how am I going to do it? You know, was well, not asking you to put ashes or sand on your on your food, but some desert fathers <laughs> did that sort of thing. Um, the fathers point out there's two types of gluttony. Um, what is it? Um, you think the I've got the Russian word for it. Yeah, Trevor, yes, Trevor, thank you. Yeah. There's two types of 
One, and I hadn't considered this myself before, I was reading this, I think, there's pleasure in eating is a form of gluttony during the fast. I might say, is it in general? I think it's in general, but for the, we're talking about the fast, right? The other one is to eat until you're full quantity. So both are passions which we have to struggle with. Now, this is what we have to struggle with during the fast, is, is to avoid eating things that, that give us pleasure. But we have to do it um, intelligently. There has to be a balance somewhere. Um, and we should not eat uh, to fill up. And sometimes I think we might do that because we panic. We say, well, how can I get through the, you know, the week if I don't eat enough? But we're not camels. You know about camels? Then they, they can go through the desert without water. Of course, the mythology, well, as a kid, I, th I thought they filled out their humps with water, but they don't because it, there's not you know, in reality. But, you know, in other words, we must not be afraid not to eat enough. We have to eat enough to live, and we must be sensible if you're ill, you're not to apply a strict fast. You mustn't do that or you have a job which is demanding. In other words, you have to decide. The ideal would be not to eat at all, but we can't do that. Okay? <coughs> if we could, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I don't mean dead, I mean in, in we'd be on the Holy Mountain or somewhere where people can live like St. John, Shanghai Ski. He lived on Prasvorki. How? Eight weeks, Prasvorki? If you look at it medically, it's impossible because there's not enough nutrition. Mind you, he was always tired and mal malnourished. He was not well, but that's his podvik, okay, his, you know, his cross crest. So we have to think in, in those terms. But the fathers also say that really, time of great length is fasting with the tongue. To me, that's much harder than fasting from food. Restore us the Lord. Yeah? How painful it is to be quiet, to be silent. It, it, it is. I don't want to admit it. Don't pretend it isn't. It is. It's difficult. We want to talk. We want to ask questions. We want, you know, we like to gossip. It's. We shouldn't, but this is a part of it. The other way is fasting with the eyes. Now, to me, this is far more difficult because we're living in the age of the internet, and we're on the the brink of maybe World War Three at the moment. And we know what Elder Pais has said about you know Turkey and things like that. So every day we're looking to see, you know, can we not do that during the Great Fast? Can we not look at the news until the weekend? These sort of things. It's to do. It's it's to do with the spirit of fasting. So to fast with the eyes is not to look at everything. I always wonder what it's going to be like if we suddenly lose electrical power. Yeah, no internet. A lot of people needing grief counselling. The internet goes down tomorrow. Mm. Just think of it. Life without it. How could you live without it? Yeah, without TV. Um, so this is the time to quieten down a bit and not to be uh, anxious about what's happening in the world. Um, the saints. Some of the saints knew what was going on in the world without even TVs or phones, telephones. They knew because they had discipline. Elder Porphyrius, for example, he could not only see uh, what was happening, he could see things in the past. He see, saw things that weren't there anymore because he was in a spiritual level. He was, well, somewhere that we've never been. Okay? Amazing. Um, so the fast is, is to prepare us for the resurrection of Pascha, that's what it's all about. And to prepare that we have to sort of shut down and, and understand that in everyday life our soul has become fleshly. It's become like, a bo like the body, it's, it seeks pleasure, uh, which is really what it's all about. And we have to learn not to be, to give in to that. And so God has given these, these fasts so we can um, control ourselves. Vas dejania, vas dejania. Abstinence. Uh, abstinence is, um, 
I'm yeah. sorry, my brain, I can't think of anything today. The trail, the um, abstinence, song covers. I don't understand, but I can <laughs> find the Tra word. Um, Do you understand what I'm saying about abstinence? Do you know what abstinence is? Lena, do you know? Carrying <laughs> without. It was different. But it was different. It was different. Okay, it was different. Yes, okay, then that is it. Okay. But you see, the, the, the way we will get through the fast and benefit from it spiritually without having some sort of ispitanya, some terrible trial, is humility. Smirenia. We have to have smirenia. Now, you can't define smirenia because the fathers say that you can't describe it. There was a desert father who was obviously a saint and a visiting a philosopher in, in the story. They called him a sophist because he, he's, he was a you know, form of philosophy. And he came and he said to the father, he says, uh, you, you say that you are a sinner, but how can you say that? How do you say you are a sinner when you you know, very holy. And he said, um, it's because one has to be humble. This is humility. He said, well, what is humility? And the other was silent. I, he said, I don't know how to answer. I can't tell you. And there was somebody else there, another father, actually our friend, Abba Dorotheus, because he wrote this story. He, he said, well, he's, he said to the philosopher, he said, it's like if you study philosophy, once you start studying it, you begin to think like a philosopher. If you do it properly, seriously. If you study medicine, and you mm -hmm. practice medicine, eventually you begin to think like a doctor. And somebody who's not a doctor does not think mm -hmm. like a doctor unless they study medicine. This could be applied to anything. And he said, when you practice humility, then you, you know what it is because it's a gift from God. And we get humility by being humble. Skromni. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And so we approach the fast. The fast says we don't do this. We say, okay, well, I, I don't think I can do this, but I'm going to give it a try. That's humility. Not to say, I will do this, and I will not do this, and I will not watch television and say things like that. That is pride. God does. You have to say, oh, I'll try not to. And trust that God will help you. Because we can't do it ourselves. We're not strong enough. And if we were, we'd be full of pride. So we have to say, I'm weak. Help me to keep the fast. And, and you know, if we manage to get through the first week fasting, fasting properly, that is, eating very simple food, um, not eating too much, uh, avoiding the news, I do recommend that because at the moment it's very disturbing. And you get through the week, you say, Slava Borgel. Not, oh, I'm done well, I'm very really good. Yeah? Slava Borgel. And through these practices, as the fathers say, we obtain humility, <coughs> which is a gift from God. And this is how we should approach everything. And you know, it is easy in a sense if you believe, if you pray, before you do anything, anything, ask God for help. This is very important. This is how we get through life. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Before you drive off somewhere, cross yourself. I like to say, every time I drive, asking for a blessing for the journey. Okay? This is, this is a habit we have to have. We must do this. Um, going to school, you know, you've got an exam at school, you, inside yourself you say a prayer. It could be just gospel people It doesn't have to be some lot of words. So everything we do, we, we ask God's help and we begin, we begin to see, you see, begin to see how God works for us individually in our lives. And that teaches us humility. Well, teachers, we become humble and we receive the gift of smirenia, humility. We have to trust God in everything we do. And I just want to check because I had, I think I had a, yeah. The fathers say, how great is the power of humility. 
is extremely powerful. And there is um, a psalm. A psalm it says, "See my humility and my toil, and take away all my sins." That's a nice prayer to be able to say it if we, if we can say it. See my humility. Yeah, this is something we need to aim toward. Saint Anthony had a vision. Saint Anthony Veliki, you know, of the desert. He had a vision of. Uh, the desert, and there were all sorts of sins, there were snares, um, tears, which are, uh, I'm sorry, but my, my mind's not working tonight. Um, Pripyatstva, okay, obstacle, everywhere, and he said, well, like a minefield, Mina, yeah, like mm -hmm. a minefield, wherever you step, you're going to step on something. He said, well, mm -hmm. how can you um, survive, you know, and you remember the, the answer that came to him, mm -hmm. or angel? By humility, by humility, you can get through all these problems, whatever it might be. Yeah, sickness, poverty, every every form of um, bedi is is through humility. God is in charge of everything. It's we have to believe when we start believing that and practicing it in every situation. You know, you're making a cake, very used cake maker. Bless the cake. Ask God to help you make a good cake. Get God involved in helping out. This is very important. I, before the liturgy, I prayed to be able to serve the liturgy. There is a beautiful prayer that I say anyway. Ask God to give me strength to serve the liturgy. It is said that when the priest says that, um, it has been known, put it this way, as the priest says that prayer, that a fire comes down, consumes the priest. I mean, not destroys the priest, but a fire, and the priest is then ready to start serving the liturgy. Don't take anything for granted. Whatever we do, we ask, we have to trust that God is behind it and helping us. And I think the hardest part of uh, being humble is to actually to believe that everybody is, is, that we are below everybody else around us. That's a hard one, I think, to even understand. I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, I'd like to. I mean, I know what it, the words mean, but to, to think that everybody around you is much on a higher level, how can one think like that? I think you can only do it by practicing it, and then somehow it, it works. It says that when, when um, the closer we get to God, the more we see our sins. The closer we get to God, the more we see our sins. And there's a quote, when Abraham saw God, he said, I am dust and ashes. When he saw the glory of God, he, you know, I'm in nothing having seen God. That's humility. Anyway, no one can explain humility. Only, you can only learn it by experience, not by verbal teaching. So we need to pray to God about everything, and we need to uh, ask God, have no um, illusions about whether we're going to get through the fast successfully. We know what to do, but we need to ask God to help us to do it, uh, and not do it out of pride. And I think this is going to be a very big challenge this fast, because of the, the situation in the world. <coughs> um, and so we need to keep this fast, and we need to pray, and we must, must believe in the power of prayer. This is very important. So your prayers and your fasting is, is giving not only giving you strength spiritually, but actually affecting those around us and the world. So this is very important. Are there any, any questions? Father, do you say about the, 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 the pleasure during the fast, during the, the eight, eight weeks fast, yes. right? But this is 40 days, not Saturday and Sunday, or because Saturday and Sunday were not real fast. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that, that means forty days uh, during the week only during yes, the week. Yes, yes, 